وعلى رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه الله بلا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم وتب علينا أنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحانك لا نحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك أنت المقدم أنت المؤخر أنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم آمين In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate, the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today is session 28, uh, the 6th of uh, February 2023. So today, inshallah, the lesson will be about uh, general benefits that we can, inshallah, achieve, have out of understanding the whole idea of the immigration to Apicenia. From what we have highlighted, According to the author, Dr. Muhammad Saeed Bakr, Jazahallahu Khairan, that I'm taking this benefit from his book. Now, he say, Anwar wa fawaid fil janab al tarbawi. Some of the enlightenments that we can apply in our life from different angles. Zakallah khair. Like I'm a wasab. If you get a shway to talk about the atfali, khafifu. If if the ahli are there, if you can. Yeah, I'm doing my best. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد طبعا انا اللي بستغرب منه بثقافتنا انه ما بتشوف اب وام ابدا بيحكوا مع ولد وطي صوتك never ever you hear a father or a mother tells a child respect the masjid والله it, it, it kills me يعني ما, ما يعني ما you never خلص just feel free do whatever you want لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله طيب what I was saying I just forgot العبر من دروس الهجرة اه الله يجزيك الخير brother can we جزاك الله خير thank you thank you عبد الرحمن قال one of the first lessons قال تعد الهجرة من أعظم وأقسى أنواع العمل بل هو الاختبار الأعظم الذي يؤكد إيمان الإنسان بفكرته He is saying now the concept of being forced to be an immigrant is one of the biggest tests that puts you under the trial to what degree really, really you believe in what you are calling for. Because hijrah, immigration, or to migrate from to basically is leaving everything you have built, <laughs> especially in their cases. Because sometimes we have a, some, sometimes of immigrations, people they go just to have a better status of finance, for example, they might live, you know. But in many cases, immigration, it's a disaster. Because you leave your house, your building, your family, your relatives, your money, your land, your connections, your relations, your memories, everything, you will be forced simply to be disconnected from your roots, which is applicable, by the way, at least on maybe 70% of us. <laughs> True or false? We know what, what they are talking about, even though ours is much, 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 actually we can't compare it. Some of us might compare it. Because they were kicked literally and they, everything was taken from them. And their families in some Arab countries, literally they were tortured and they are imprisoned and some, you know, Arab countries. We know them. But uh, here, they are quoting the following. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is a glad tidings. Glad tidings. Because sometimes, really, some of us in the age of 50, in the age of 60, in the age of 70, he was forced simply to migrate by force. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the one of the most beautiful verses in this context. وَمَنْ يُهَاجِرْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَثِيرًا وَسَعَى وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكْهُ الْمَوْتُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ 
وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا The first lesson, the first benefit, the first thing we need to remember when we listen, when we read, when we recall the incident of the whole idea of Apicenia. Because they went there for two main reasons. To save the da'wah, because at any moment they might face what we call now as a mass killing, massacre, that all of them, they might be killed. So they want to, pres to, pres to preserve part of Muslims, because they were just, you know, you can count them with your, you know, handful of eyes, just 10, 15, 17, 20, they are very, just tens. So to preserve the da'wah and to make da'wah. By the way, the incident of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the discussion between Ja'far and, radiallahu anhu, and the uh, Najashi, it was what? One of the highest levels of da'wah. Because simply he was not hiding his identity. He was so proud of what he's holding. When he was asked, he was so clear. This is what I believe in. This is what I represent. This is what our prophet has been given by his Lord. The end result, the king of Apisenia became a Muslim. <laughs> so, let's read the meaning of this ayah. وَمَنْ يُهَاجَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَثِيرًا وَسَعَى وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ فِي مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكْهُ الْمَوْتُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Whoever immigrates in the cause of Allah will find many safe havens and bountiful resources throughout the earth. This is a promise from Allah. Anyone who is kicked out of his, he was, you know, he was forced to be an immigrant. If the main reason why he was kicked out and became an immigrant because, you know, like in Surah Al-Buruj, وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا You know when you go to Surah Al-Buruj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a group of believers, it's believed in the con historical context they were true Christian Muslims. You know what I mean. They were what? Christian Muslims. You know what this means? They were genuine Christians at that time following the true religion of Allah, i.e. Islam. Okay? So they were tortured. They were about to be killed, to be, you know, thrown into the fire by the dictator of that time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ The only thing they were holding, this kind of envy and hatred against them, just, they have not done any bad thing. Nothing against anyone. Just يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ Just because they were believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, they were burned alive. So we come back here. Whoever immigrates in the cause of Allah, be careful. This is a condition. وَمَيْ يُهَاجِرْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Which means, when you immigrate, whether to do da'wah. By the way, the one, like, you, you, you know, brothers in the uh, da'wah and tabliq jama'at, they call them, I think, you call them in, in Urdu, tabliq jama'at, you call them? Tabliq jama'at, okay? Jama'at al-da'wah al tabliq bil Arabi. One of the good examples, some of them, they go for months, sometimes one year, they do some kind of semi-hijrah. They leave and they go make da'wah. This is one of the forms of <laughs> hijrah sometimes. Sheikh, Allahumma uh, sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, rahimahullah, Abdul Rahman al-Sumit. The well-known, may Allah descend his mercy upon him. He was a very well-known Kuwaiti doctor. He spent about 50 years of his life in Africa. He brought to Islam from Africans between 11 to 15 millions in 50 years. He was a doctor. Medically, he was helping thousands of Africans, you know, and he called. So basically, this is a form of what? Hijrah. <laughs> he left all kind of, you, you, you know what do you mean by Kuwait? <laughs> the, the journalist life of Kuwaiti people. He left all of this behind his back and he went and spent most of his life in Africa helping African brothers and sisters. And he brought millions of them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have this and we have this. And we have those politically who were tortured and forced to go. If they were not killed, they must have 
emigrated or otherwise they would be raped, killed and tortured. So we have different forms. However, they all share that they are, they are migrating in the cause of Allah, either to support something for the cause of Allah, or they were kicked out because they are saying La ilaha illallah. So at the end, all of them, they revolve around the idea of <laughs> the cause of Allah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using, you know, the Quran is using it very clever, fi sabilillah. Because sometimes no one is forcing you, but you are going there to fill a gap, like Abdurrahman Sumat, no one was forcing him. His Iman was forcing him. Because everyone is going to the nice good places, but no one cares with Africans. <laughs> okay, so he went there. So subhanAllah, well, now we have brothers from Egypt, brothers from Syria, brothers from Iraq. If they were stayed in their countries, most likely some of them, they will be killed. So they have to leave. Actually, they were forced to leave. So we have this and we have that. All of them, as long as you are leaving, this is the glad tidings of the Quran. As long as you are leaving your roots, your place, by default, we love our countries. By default, we love our places. By default, we love the spots where we were. You know, we have the memories. Place where you lived, you know, you were raised. It contains the most beautiful memories in your life. So when you are completely disconnected and just thrown somewhere else to start a new life, it's not something easy. And no one knows what we are talking about unless those who are, are experiencing <laughs> this experience. Anyway, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving those people the glad tidings. Whoever immigrates in the cause of Allah will find many, look, Allah is the promiser now, <laughs> will find many safe havens. Safe havens and bountiful resources throughout the earth. The earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rizq is decided by Allah. Qal, those who leave their homes and die. Now another more specific glad tidings. But what if someone is leaving for the cause of Allah or he's kicked out because he was calling for Allah? He has done nothing yet. No achievement, zero achievement. But still in the way he has just left the place. Passed away. Look how accurate the Quran is. Whoever those who leave their homes and die while emigrating to Allah and His Messenger, their reward has already been been secured with Allah. Don't worry. <laughs> you are not waited to achieve a tangible asset, something. Oh, look, no, 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 your intention. Why you were left, why you were forced, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with you. Their reward has already been secured with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the all forgiving, most merciful. This is one of the first lessons we need to recall while remembering all the incident of going to Abyssinia. And by the way, when we talk about ثم يدرك الموت فقد وقع أجره على الله His أجر, his road has been secured. Let me remind you about something I always repeat and I would love to keep repeating. Talking about myself as someone who spent, alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now more or less about 40 years of practicing Islam. When I started just to change my life and I, I started, I was not practicing Islam. I started practicing Islam in 1982. 81, 82, so 40 plus. So, and I started studying officially Islam and teaching Islam 1985. So I took about 38 years. I tell the people, if you ask me what is the most beautiful thing in Islam <laughs> you have come across after believing in Allah, I say the fact that Allah will hold us accountable for our intentions and efforts, regardless of results. I repeat, the most beautiful thing that I personally keep always having the energy from all the time, you know, no frustration. Whatever, Allah will deal us, deal with us according to two main factors, intention, efforts. That's it. Close the file. Intention, efforts. Intention means no matter whether the people know or they don't know, who cares? <laughs> By the way, this is not something easy. If you believe that Allah will deal with your intention, you will happy 24-7. Unless, la subhanallah, if your intention is not good. <laughs> no, so inshallah, but as long as you are profiling your intention, 
you will feel happy because Allah knows the people they don't know and sometimes really you will you will find the very tough times because the people they don't know and they don't believe but what will give you the power is what Allah knows because Allah knows don't worry this is number one two efforts regardless of results but the achievements is zero no problem what was your intention what was your effort taking in consideration your abilities have you done your best yes does Allah know طبعاً. what was your intention for the sake of Allah don't worry full ajr everything but ya Allah no one knew that was intention don't worry I did my best but they uh, they thought I'm a liar don't worry <laughs> I did my best, but you know, my enemies, they destroyed my, they assassinated my character. And that, don't worry. <laughs> but I could not achieve anything from my plans. Don't worry. So the end result, why to worry? <laughs> Are you with me? So this is one of the meanings where this ayah is confirming. وَمَنْ خَرَجَ وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَثُمَّ يُدْرِكُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ عَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ your reward has been secured. Don't worry. Don't worry. But this is the first lesson. Second lesson. Now, the, 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 the writer says, قَالْ أَثَّبَاتُ عَلَى الْقِيَمْ وَعَدَمِ الذَّوَبَانِ فِي دِيَارِ الْحِجْرَةِ وَالْلُجُوءِ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ الْقِيَمِ الَّتِي يَتَحَلَّى بِهَا الْمُهَاجِرِ وَلَقَدْ شَهِدَ عمرو بن العاص للصحابة الكرام بين يدي النجاشي بهذه الصفة عندما وصفهم بقوله خرجوا من دين آبائهم ولم يدخلوا في دينك أيها النجاشي أي دين النصراني Now the other lesson from immigration One of the greatest characteristics of the true believer to be steadfast on holding your identity your faith, your religion, and don't feel shy to keep highlighting, talking how proud you are about what you believe in. This is one of the greatest things. Now he's saying they were so steadfast, so proud, even though physically they were very weak. No one was supporting them. I mean, from physically, materialistically speaking, okay? To a degree, Amr ibn As himself, when he was trying to destroy, I mean, you know, the whole story of them, he was admitting that they were so proud of their identity to a degree when he was trying to provoke al Najash against them, what did he say? They left the religion of their forefathers in Mecca and they are not following your religion, oh great king. <laughs> He's admitting what? They are proud of what they have. <laughs> they don't change. They are not hypocrites. <laughs> so, in light of this, now one of the greatest results of that, Islam with this group was secured, they were preserved, plus the king became a Muslim. And there is a lesson. Please don't mix between the facts, between the facts that. Now, by the way, this specific one is applicable on 99.9% .9 of us. True or false? Now we are living in a place according to the Western criteria is one of the best places. Yani if you want to compare Canada, for example, with France in terms of welcoming immigrants, <laughs> one to one thousand. <laughs> True or false? In terms of respecting others, even, even America, by the way, in America, generally speaking, American culture, if you are not melted within the pot of being an American, you will not be accepted easily. In Canada, generally speaking, one of the great slogans, at least officially supported, they celebrate differences. Which means, keep your identity, the fact that you are proud of your culture, including your religion, in itself, it's a value. I mean, easily, this is completely, completely unacceptable in France. So why I'm saying that? Now, Canada is one of the greatest places in terms of welcoming immigrants. Does this mean, because they are welcoming me to feel shy, 
not to speak about my values and principles. At any time I meet any nice, good person, simply I close talking about my values because they might not like it. <laughs> no, we are living in it now. <laughs> you are living exactly. By the way, it's, it's actually, it was much more difficult at that time because they were in a very, very sensitive, difficult situation. Their enemies, they were provoking the king with the mightiest power at that time. By the way, uh, Negos or Najashi at that time wa was one of the great kings, very powerful. It's not any uh, marginal one. One of the great kings and the Christian Apicini at that time, it's yani, more or less in that time, like now, for example, when you speak about great powers, when you speak about America, Russia, France, you know, for example, the, the UK, it's something similar to that at that time. It's not. So when you are there under the power, speaking with the king himself, and your enemies have the big power financially, and they have given the bribe to all the archbishops and bishops, which means the media. <laughs> all the media is against you. Can you imagine yourself? Try, try to, to apply it in our context now. <laughs> you believe in something, you have not done anything wrong, okay? But everyone is using the power against you. The only thing that you hold is the truth. And your faith in this truth, and your readiness to keep talking steadfast about this truth, but everything else is against you. It's not easy. It's not easy. We can understand this when we look to the political context. Many people, because they have said something they believed in a few years ago, when they want to go to the elections, so we say, you should answer, say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I did not mean it, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They change, they're ready, because they can't stand attacking the people, even though they believe in what they have said, and they know that what they have said is true. But because of the pressure, because of the attack, because of the character assassination, because of can they change, <laughs> and they apologize. <laughs> is this true or not now? Yes, at that time, when they were pushed into the corner, Nigos came, what do you say about Jesus Christ? He said, we say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul taught us. Abdullahi wa Rasuluh wa kalimatuhu alqaha ila Maryam wa ruham min. He was created by Allah. He is the slave and the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He himself and his highly respected mother alayhi salam. Period. Now, put yourself in the place of Jafar. Now you are waiting everything to be exploded in your face now. Subhanallah. Here comes now the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qal wallahi, what you have said that is not far any step from what I believe in. So, <laughs> you know, it was one of the biggest, you know, subhanallah surprise at that time. But the idea, don't feel shy, speak about the truth. This does not mean to be tough. Don't mix. Be polite, be wise, don't hide your principles. And by the way, this tells us about how much we might be falling in short by not telling others about us. Why, why do you, you, for example, you live since a full year, you have a non-Muslim neighbor. Why you waited 12 years out of a sudden, just out of a sudden, their kids came for the Halloween. But you know, Halloween, it has a big issue for us. It's a, it has a satanic roots, <laughs> okay? It has something has to do with something against our faith. So we don't celebrate it, okay? We, do, we don't attack others, but we don't celebrate it. Why, why not to prepare for these things? Why not to invite your neighbors? Why not to speak with them? Why not to let them have that you have your restrictions? You don't mind at all to, to, to love all kind of khair for them. You will be happy for them, for their weddings, for whatever, graduations, for example, giving birth. You, you, you share nice food with them, some sweets, even when you share food. When you give a food, oh, thank you, when we do some, okay, but excuse me, you know, I really will be very happy to have any kind, but we don't eat pork, for example, and we don't eat, in case if you want really to do something, I can't, for example, eat pork, I can't eat lard, I can't 
have any kind of sweets mixed with champagne because sometimes you know the best chocolate in the world is mixed with cognac and champagne as if I'm an expert I don't know what is cognac and champagne but this is what they say okay because sometimes I say Sheikh how did you know and I was reading what they say how did I know <laughs> okay <coughs> because it happened with me like that. it happened with me maybe twice once you know, a very dear guest to my heart came to visit me, he was coming, I think, from Germany or France, I forget. So he wanted to really, really, yani, to honor me. He brought me a very expensive chocolate. <laughs> Once he left, I just read behind the kada, it contains champagne. I said, <laughs> and I, I love chocolate. Is there a fatwa? <laughs> Subhanallah. Anyway, but I mean, I mean, no problem. Let them know, they respect you. They will respect because everyone has his own cultural restrictions, beliefs, something. It's not something, but you yourself be proud of what you have. Don't feel shy. <laughs> Let them know you by this, the khair will spread. And this is a big lesson from that time. They did not feel shy, did not hide their faith. They did not, but they were so, by the way, this, that, our, one of our problems, especially with some youth, they think, the fact that you must feel proud of your identity, you must be tough and rude. No. No. Was Jafar rude? High respectful. Well, how do you say, Ayyuh al-Malik? Your great honor. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for allowing us to stay with you. He was respecting him. He was speaking him with all kinds of titles. As long as he's not using a word which goes against our faith, no problem. So, this is a, 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 another lesson, a third lesson. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Qal al-mawdu'iyya allati kana yatahalla biha al-najashi hiya allati saqathu lil-adl thumma lil-islam fawa lam yahkum hatta sami'a mina al-tarafayni thumma nhaza lil-lughat al-aqli wal-mantaq la lil-lughat al-ighra'i wal-ighwa'a. They say, look, let's take a lesson. Negos, he was a very objective person. He was just an objective and just person. He was, you know, using his intellectual power with high ethics. So he listened. He reflected upon, he discovered, he took a decision. What is this? What, what's the lesson? Don't lose hope. Always you will find good, genuine people who are seeking the truth. But you keep broadcasting. <laughs> By the way, your device must keep broadcasting. You never know when the signal will be accepted by any device. <laughs> you must keep what? Broadcasting. No, 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 no. All the time. All the time. Out of a sudden, this one. What? When? How? Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Don't wait him to come to you because you think you are right without you. What? Telling, speaking, conveying, sending, discussing. The good word that we can use, broadcasting. Your, broad <laughs> your broadcast must be 24-7 on. <laughs> now, depending on your sincerity, inshallah, your intention, Allah will send to you the, uh, let's say, the devices who has accepted your broadcast. <laughs> Depending on the quality, the, uh, you know, the receivers. You are the, you broadcast, we have receivers. صح? They, some people all the time, they are doing to, what? Tune in, they are tuning. This is just, <laughs> Quits. Come, yalla, tfaddal. This is how Muslims should be working. Wallahu alam. Okay. Now, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. The, okay, sorry. I finished my, my points. Now, I will conclude and finish, inshallah, today's, because next time, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, I will start the story of At-Ta'if. It's another amazing, amazing incident that happened with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He decided to go to visit the city of At-Ta'if. A great incident happened with him 
when he was there and the reaction and there is a huge lesson in that however now the conclusion now by today's session we finished the whole package of immigration to Abyssinia first one second one what happens between the meeting the narration of Umm Salama radiallahu anha the whole great benefits now in about five minutes can I listen at least to two one brother one sister what was one of the great lessons you benefited from this story great lessons that affected you influenced you you think really it had an impact in your life through listening to three or four or five sessions i forgot how many one i think yes brother can you speak loudly as much as you can i learned like uh, never lie about your faith you should be proud of whatever is obstacles whatever you're facing should be proud of your faith regardless of obstacles. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. What else? Those who were with us. Just, you know, I mean, I mean, this is one of the educational ways just how to fix concepts in your mind, how to refresh your memory and to fix it. Yes, brother uh, Yahya. Yeah, you mentioned a couple of times now and before that Allah will... Um, give us azure based on our, our niyyah. Yeah. So not, maybe I didn't achieve something, or maybe I didn't complete the mm. whole Quran, or an action I'm doing, yeah. but Allah, inshallah, will give us azure based on that I had the intention to actually complete it, or do, to do something. The do great something. relation between intention and the reward. <laughs> not necessarily, by the way, this does not mean don't seek the achievements. I mean, if you have done your best, for whatever reason, Allah did not well. <laughs> no achievement. The core point, intention and efforts, ajr is guaranteed by the Mawla Azza wa Jal. Full peace of mind, full energy, full motivation, regardless. When you connect this with being proud of your identity, Yes, yes, brother. It connects perfectly in the story. Like, uh, for example, if he had the intention to go to the king and convince him, he had the intention, say they, he declined to execute him, he still has the same reward that when he convinced him in the end. Because in the end, he ended up convincing the king uh, about al Islam. But if the king decided not to hear anything, yes. to execute him, he still has the same reward. So no matter even if it seems hopeless, right? Uh, the reward is still certain. So. Sure. So, so you are talking about basically the power of the intention when they were standing before the king. Yeah. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. What else? Lessons, sisters, brothers. Because for me, I finished today's session, inshallah, and I will say goodbye for you. Unless if you have to add something. Any other type? Jazakumullah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our deeds, inshallah, from you and from all of us. Jazakumullah khair. See you next time. There is a possibility, a possibility I might not be giving uh, next week's session. So please, in case if you are coming from a uh, far place, keep an eye on the uh, group, okay? There's a possibility, about 70% I might not be giving next session, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.